Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and in today's episode of The 10 Minute Gardener we're going to be planting the first of our perennial vegetables. Remember we're, we're planting perennials because although they take more time initially they will crop for years and years. Um, they take less time which is what my mom's so keen on and, and this is in my mom's 10 minute garden. And I suppose the best known of all of those perennial vegetables that most of us come into contact with is asparagus. So today we're going to be talking about asparagus crowns, what you should plant them and how to get them in the ground. If you're not watching this at Learn How to Garden there is a link below this video. If you hop over there all that will cost you is your email address and that means that you kept up to date with an email every single time we put up a new one of our films and of course it means you get access to our free monthly newsletter which contains recipes and sort of hints and tips on how we grow things and what we find really works for us. Asparagus. Now at one time most of the asparagus that we got was grown in England but most of the asparagus that you and I now see comes from Peru. Um, I think compared to what I was used to as a kid it's tasteless, you know it's a bit stringy and I think growing asparagus is one of those things that is really worth the time and effort. Now you'll need to look at how to prepare a perennial bed and that's on a previous video, I'll put a link below this one. And the first one we're going to plant, as I say, is asparagus, although for those eagle-eyed among you, you'll notice there are a couple of things in this bed already, and that's sea kale, but that's covered in the next video that's coming. When you go to buy asparagus, it'll arrive like this, and I'm planting this in the autumn. This is on the 25th of November. Um, it's actually the day after one of the worst storms we've had down here in years. And what I find fascinating, the ground is sodden. But this bed, prepared properly, is friable. This is workable. This is why deep beds and perennial beds, or <coughs> excuse me, no dig beds, work brilliantly. And there are lots of choice for asparagus. This one is actually a purple asparagus, which is slightly tender, uh, slightly more tender when you sort of get it less stringy. And it actually is one you don't see in the shops and if you steam it it will keep its colour and when they come they look a bit like this they're sort of you've got a growing tip and then you have these long quite fragile roots a bit like uh, a sort of Portuguese man of war or one of those jellyfish we're all used to seeing on David Attenborough and it's these roots that are quite important when we come to plant it and Again, because this could be in this bed for a quarter of a century, 25 years, you don't want to cram it in. So you really want at least six inches between plants, which is what these little dots of grit are showing you, and about 18 inches sort of across the bed. So we're going to have two rows of five, which will, the first year, we're not actually going to pick anything at all. And when asparagus spears grow, if you leave them, they sort of turn into light, fluffy fern, asparagus fern. And for the first year, all we're trying to do is get more and more of these roots to give us more of the asparagus long term. So the first thing you need to do is work out how many you're going to get in, and we're going to get 10 in here. And then we're going to take out a trench, literally a foot wide, across the bed and put that soil at the side. So I'll dig the trench and then once you've dug the trench I'll show you what goes in the middle. We've prepared or the first trench it's about six to eight inches deep and then you take this soil and what you're actually going to do is along the bottom of this trench you're going to form a mound and the reason we're going to form this mound it's on the top of this mound that we're actually going to plant our asparagus and then we're actually going to drape the roots either side. So the mound will go all the way along, then you'll take an asparagus crown, separate the roots and uh, if you're buying asparagus go to a specialist. As you can see these roots are very thick, um, although very very brittle, <coughs> nice growing tip. A lot of the ones I see in pre-sort of prepared packets are dried out. Once they're that desiccated, they're not coming back. And you basically, very gently, lie the asparagus on the top of the ridge. And we'll do that, as we say, all the way along with about six inches to eight inches between the plants and we'll put five along here then what you start to do is gently infill with this soil that has 
about 30% grit into here, lots of compost. You want to have them well fed. Again, they're in here for a long, long time. Once we've got our asparagus sitting on top of the mound, we gently start to backfill. And what we're going to do, once this is done, we're actually going to add some more compost and grit. And we're actually going to cover these by about three to four inches, so it'll be raised up above the bed. And if you want white asparagus, we sort of, especially in France, you see the white asparagus. That's exactly the same as this. You just grow it slightly differently. And when it comes um, to growing this, I'll show you how to do that. It's quite simple. You use sand and it's sort of a, a technique the French have perfected, obviously. And we'll get this in, we'll get the second row in, and then I'll talk to you about the cycle we're going to go through to get really succulent, brilliant asparagus. So we've now got all our 10 asparagus in. We've covered it with about four inches of the uh, soil in the bed, which is a mixture of grit and really well uh, rotted compost, leaf mould and the soil. And if I put my hand here, you can see it's about six inches to the top of the bed, you know, about a hand width. And you get these two sort of like graves, I suppose, barrows, you could call them, lying in the bed. And that is where your asparagus is now going to be for 25 years. For the first year, what we're going to do is in a moment we're going to put a tiny bit of calcified seaweed on the top of this. Asparagus really doesn't like it too acidic, very natural. And then come February we're going to put a tiny bit of fish, blood and bone, again an organic fertiliser on, to help it to get established. And for the first year we're growing purely the roots, so any spears that come, leave them alone, let them turn into fern. The second year you can probably take perhaps one, a maximum of two meals, but it will be worth waiting for. Again, the majority of the time is to get those roots going. And from the third year, you can pick really from sort of the end of April till the beginning of June. And I think asparagus is one of those things that when it's here, you want a glut of it. Hollandaise sauce and asparagus, I could eat until I'm twice this size. In fact, I probably have been twice this size from eating asparagus. If you wonder what the six little dots are. Put some grit down as to where the heads of your asparagus are because it's very shallow rooted. You've seen how brittle and friable those roots are. You want to hand weed this, that means using your fingers at maximum using a little spork, but I would just pick out the weeds using your fingers. And it's just a little trick to let you remember where they are. And this bed's finished now. It's got sea cow plants in the end. That'll be the next video. The asparagus here. We're going to be planting globe artichokes. And um, we'll just show you how this rolls along. So although it's work at the beginning, it's well worth spending that time. It will taste nothing like the asparagus you buy in your local supermarket. Um, the asparagus you buy from the side of the road from growers is nice, but this will still be sort of slightly better. As we all know, if you've put the time and effort into growing it, it always tastes better because you know exactly what's there. So that's Mark at Learn How to Garden saying, I hope you're enjoying this series on perennial vegetables. I think we'll be growing more and more of them. Um, it makes sense to me to have as many as you can. The globe artichokes we're in fact going to plant right in the middle of a flower bed uh, because they are so stunning and that'll be the next one we're planting. And then there's some quite unusual ones coming. There's some earth chestnuts we'll be talking about and some Schwann peppers. So, you know, one of those things to think, can I squeeze some of these in somewhere? And once I've done the work, that's all I've got to do is just wait to enjoy eating it. So thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, that's Mark saying bye for now.